I'm Ben Eisler, inside City Hall. Before we get started tonight, I just want to mention once again that I will be hosting a debate with the candidates all together November 2nd, 7 p.m. And if there are any issues you want covered, please send me an email, itch, I-C-H, at cctvcambridge.org. All right. My first guest tonight has been an environmentalist since before it was trendy, and she's expected to introduce a ban on leaf blowers at the next council meeting. Incumbent candidate for the city council, Henrietta Davis. Why the ban on leaf blowers? Noise. <laughs> <laughs> Noise one, dust two. Um, primarily because for years we've been hearing from people who have been losing their minds, basically, over leaf, blow leaf blowers, uh, particularly in residential areas. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be a problem more in the low-scale residential areas where, of course, there are people who can afford to hire contractors. So the ban I'm planning to introduce is a ban on commercial contractors blowing leaves uh, altogether mm -hmm. so that they would not be able to be using leaf blowers in residential areas. And, and is it correct also that they're not completely necessary, that raking does as effective <laughs> Well, there, before leaf blowers, there were yeah. rakes. Right. <laughs> there were rakes, there were brooms. <laughs> I mean, no, there were not always leaf blowers. Right, okay. <laughs> so I know um, perhaps your biggest concern is the environment and, and making sure that we're taking care of it in Cambridge. Um, and I know that uh, one of the things you said when you were running in 2005 was that you were looking for ways for the city to buy more renewable energy, uh, such as wind power. How's that been going? Well, as it turns out, uh, the most important thing that we need to do is to be energy efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm interested in renewables, and I'm certainly looking for ways to, for us to buy wind. But as a matter of fact, we don't have a lot of wind, mm -hmm. despite you know what people <laughs> say about City Hall. Right. Uh, <laughs> we don't have a lot of wind in, uh, in Cambridge. And Harvard is doing a study for the Alston campus, so we'll get their data. And even though they're in Alston, they're pretty close to Cambridge. Mm -hmm. if, it, if they find that they have wind, uh, then we may go further to pursue this. But for the time being, uh, we're just waiting for data. Um, and as far as solar is concerned, solar mm -hmm. is very expensive, and people know that. And you know, the 20-year payback period, and some people will uh, go ahead and do that. And we'll, we're certainly doing it on city buildings with subsidies and so mm -hmm. on. But uh, it's not all that easy to do solar but the big thing is the big thing is energy efficiency uh, 80 percent of all our emissions in Cambridge come from buildings from uh, from emissions coming from buildings mm -hmm. and we can make those buildings more efficient uh, any building probably can be made more efficient and uh, uh, we have this brand new project the Cambridge Energy Alliance mm -hmm. which you may have heard of yeah uh, which is uh, a big special project that uh, will be the first city that has such a thing in the country, as far as I know. Can you explain exactly <sighs> what that is? Well, I'm going to try. <laughs> uh, the, um, uh, it turns out that uh, the people who supply electricity to us, the grid who manage the supply of electricity mm -hmm. to us, uh, New England ISO, uh, uh, has, has to buy electricity from power plants. Uh, they can buy electricity from power plants, or they can buy energy uh, demand reduction, a uh, reduction in the amount of energy that's used. And this is a technique that's been used in New York City, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, building operators have promised to reduce their energy use, and they sell that to the energy manager, to the ISO that manages New York. And our ISO, ISO New England, uh, is planning to buy energy reduction, a guarantee of ener energy reduction. So that energy reduction will fund uh, the will be accomplished through energy efficiencies such as making buildings tighter, new windows and new doors and automatic th turn down thermostats and compact fluorescent light bulbs, a lot of very low-tech kind of stuff. Right. Uh, and that low-tech stuff will be, so you'll be able to borrow money to do that at a low or no uh, or zero interest rate from the Cambridge Energy Alliance which will get its money to give you that money, to loan you that money uh, from the New England ISO, which wants to buy demand reduction. So it's a market-based model, which mm. is what's beautiful about it. Yeah. It's not, uh, you know, this is not nonprofits doing good stuff. This is uh, economics and... Um, Economic environmentalists. Exactly. <laughs> and as it turns out, uh, the uh, uh, venture capitalists, VCs, I guess they're called, mm -hmm. venture capitalists are interested in this. And so they're coming knocking at the Cambridge Energy Alliance to look to see if they can invest because they know they can get a return on the investment. Great. So what would you say are your biggest accomplishments in, in terms of the environment in Cambridge? 
Well, I, I think my biggest accomplishment was that I brought in uh, the initial council order and many subsequent orders that really positioned us as a national environmental model. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one being that we get our emissions, that we measure our emissions, and that we determine uh, how we could reduce our emissions. We set a goal of a 20 percent reduction. I brought mm -hmm. that in uh, as a policy order that the council all adopted. I brought in a council order in 2000 that we build all our new buildings as green buildings, and that I think is very uh, has had really tangible results, you know, in terms of our own buildings, which are now yeah. green. Uh, and then I brought in another council order saying that we should uh, uh, reduce our emissions by 80 percent by 2050, which is the that's the goal, that's yeah. the international goal. Now, and uh, councilor, I, I have a question because it's clear that you have some tremendous accomplishments in terms of the environment and it's clear that you are a wealth of information on this stuff. I was looking on the website, the city website, and it says that you are not on the environment committee. My question is, why? I wasn't appointed to the environment committee. Why? I, I was not in charge of making appointments. Okay. I um, wondered if anybody would notice that. <laughs> but it certainly was not my wish. Okay. Um, now, <clears throat> we were talking about economics before. Um, the jobs rate in Cambridge is slightly negative, which means there are fewer jobs last year than there are this year, slightly. Um, how do you balance your environmental um, priorities with your economic priorities in terms of creating jobs? Well, I mean, this Energy Alliance is going to create a lot of jobs because uh, the goal is to get into 50% of all the buildings in Cambridge over mm -hmm. the next five years. That's a lot of energy efficiency work that's going to go on. So much so that uh, we had a forum in Boston on creating new jobs and what it would mean to create a green jobs uh, strand for, uh, for Cambridge kids and adults. And mm -hmm. uh, it's very much in the formative stage. There'll be a committee that's pulled together by the city manager to see how it works. But there's work to be had there. And Deval Patrick thinks so, too. You know, so this is not just a local, you know, goody two shoes idea. This right. is something that's coming for all of us. Who do you think is going to change all those windows? You know. Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, the environment's a clear priority. Uh, one choice that has to be made, even in Cambridge, where there's a, a tremendous amount of money, is open spaces or affordable housing. Mm -hmm. How do you balance those two? Which well, Where would you say your priorities lie more? Well, my priorities lie in getting things done. You know, so I, I'm, I'm really interested in being effective and, mm -hmm. and getting results. I know all politicians say that, but yeah. I really, that's what I really like to do. And uh, the best way to do environmental things is not by spending money on open space at the cost that it, is, that it exists here in Cambridge. The best way to deal with open space is to take better care of what we have, to really take advantage of what uh, DCR has because they have acres and acres of land in Cambridge mm -hmm. and we need to partner better with them. Um, and I've been reassured by the city manager that if we found a lot of land that made sense to buy, that he would bring forward to us a recommendation and we would find a way to do that. But you, you can't just, you know, say, great, we'll spend $25 million to get an acre of land that happens to be in the place you'd like to have the acre of land. That would be foolish. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do a lot more good, basically, by putting our CPA money, the community preservation money, 80% of that into housing. And that meets uh, one of the other goals that I'm working on, which is to keep families in Cambridge. It'd be mm -hmm. very easy in Cambridge, uh, in the kind of city we have with the kinds of housing costs we have, for families to say, that's it, I'm not putting up with this, I'm leaving, I'm going to the suburbs. And, uh, and I think that uh, they're very, that's a very important part of what I think is the character of Cambridge, and I want to see that continue. Okay.